Hey, you've got Rob here from Terror at Synth High, here today to talk to you about some 80s slashers that I think, personally, are underrated in one way or another. Um, so, just to clarify, um, this is not a list of the most underrated slashers that I think are out there. It's not even a list of, um, you know, what I think are the best slashers. These are just uh, ones that, for some reason, were overlooked. Um, yeah, I just want to give them a little bit, a little bit of bender loving. So, Start off, Rocktober Blood, 1984. Um, this is a very rock and roll movie, um, a very uh, 80s rock and roll, metal, uh, glammy kind of movie in a way. Um, it's, uh, it definitely focuses on individual songs made for the movie which are really, really cheesy, and that's a great thing. Um, you know, this is definitely uh, fitting into the cheese camp here. Um, some of these movies I put on the list because, um, you know, it, that, that cheesy fun level, uh, some of them are going to be for, you know, good kills or, you know, good um, atmosphere, whatever it may be that you love about 80s slashers. So I tried to get a pretty well-rounded list. Um, this is definitely in the cheese camp. Um, not to say that it doesn't try to play it, um, kind of straightforward sometimes, but... Uh, there's definitely some intentional um, lines, which I uh, won't spoil for you, um, but definitely worth a, worth a watch if you like um, 80s, any, any sort of 80s metal. Uh, we're talking about the cheesy stuff. Um, and if you like um, masked killers, uh, there's gonna be a twist ending. Um, you're probably gonna see it coming, um, but it's just fun. It's just uh, all around a, uh, definitely I think, um, one I don't really hear about all that often, and while it's not going to excel in any one particular area, I think it's just a good all-around fun movie. Uh, all right, so next, uh, Don't Open Till Christmas. Um, this is definitely the most grindhouse feeling uh, movie on this list. A lot of the people that um, worked on the movie Pieces, uh, which you might be familiar with if you're a slasher fan, um, also worked on this. Um, the guy who played the Dean, um, I think it was, um, I forgot what his name was. I think it was um, Edward. Just double check that. Don't have all my, my facts down for this. Um, yes, Edmund Purdom. Um, he was the uh, he directed this movie and was also the actor that was the uh, dean in Pieces, uh, who has a very famous role in in that movie. If you uh, have seen that before. Um, so yeah, a lot of similarities um, with the, the cheesiness of, of this kind of movie. I would personally put Pieces as the better movie. Um, better in a good, worst way, if you've ever seen that. Uh, the reason that didn't make the list is I feel that that is talked about more than this. Um, this, you're going to get, uh, again, a lot of cheese. It takes place um, in England, actually, uh, which is... You don't see as, as much, you don't see as many slashers that were done in this style. It was more of the, uh, more of the giallo, um, just over in, in Europe in general, and uh, even in the UK. So, um, yeah, this uh, someone is uh, killing off Santa Clauses. Um, there's some pretty humorous deaths in this. Um, I wouldn't say any of the effects are amazing or anything. I think they probably spent all their money on getting Carolyn Monroe, who does um, uh, one of her own songs and plays herself in this. Uh, anybody who is a fan of these 80s movies will know that she is uh, a scream, scream queen from the time period um, that it was in many, many things. Um, I was surprised to see her in this when I first saw it. Um, didn't think the budget was going to cover it. Uh, although she has played some, uh, I, I think sometimes she'll, she'll do some things for lower prices. Maybe, maybe not as much uh, after that. But um, yeah, this one is, uh, like I said, definitely got a very grimy feeling to it. Um, it definitely the most um, grindhouse movie on the list, I would, I would say. Uh, Definitely worth a worth a watch for something something different, different a little bit different pacing than a regular slasher movie too than you know um, what I would consider a regular American slasher movie. So uh, also very interesting. Deadly Dreams. I never hear anybody talk about this um, like ever. I forgot where I even learned about this. Um, also for this for this list, I was only doing things that I have some sort of a physical copy of. Um, now, it, it, but however that is, whether that's a you know a DVD, uh, Blu-ray. Uh, unfortunately, this one's a rip. Um, but 
Uh, it's the only way I was able to get it. If I can get it any other way, if anybody else knows where I can get it, uh, please let me know in the comments so that I can get up a more, a more legit copy of this. But Deadly Dreams, I, I believe, I believe this was only on VHS. I don't think it made it to DVD, not that I'm aware of. Um, so this one borderlines a psychological thriller, 1988, a little bit later. Um, but also has a very slasher feel to it. I mean, if you take a look at this cover, you can see anybody who's wearing a wolf skin mask um, and actually kills with a shotgun. It's a little bit different than a regular slasher movie. Um, there, there are some very interesting scenes in this, and it does definitely border on the psychological side of uh, the slasher movie. Towards the end of the 80s, you know, it was a different, a little bit different flavor than the early, <laughs> earlier 80s stuff. Um, this one is very, um, well, it's about, you know, this, this guy who... Um, has memories of a killer coming in in, the, in a uh, wolf mask and killing his parents when he was younger. And um, now he thinks he's back. Whether that's true or not, you gotta watch the movie to find out. There are, <laughs> there are a, lot of, uh, a lot of plot holes in this movie. Either that or I can't figure it out. I've watched it a, couple <laughs> a few times in the last few years. And um, yeah, it, it gets confusing and convoluted at a point. It's got twists, maybe too many, but that makes it really fun and interesting. Uh, again, I never hear anybody talk about this one. It's a good um, small town kind of a slasher movie. And again, like I said, definitely borders on psychological. Um, it's got... It, it, I really think that there was some pretty good acting in this, honestly, for, for, this, for this type of movie and for their budget. Um, de wor worth a watch for something... Um, again, Masked Killer... You might not have seen, um, maybe you've heard of it, uh, new, fair, relatively new to me um, in the last few, few years, one of the more recent finds for me. Um, Death Spa. Now, Death Spa, I feel like people kind of confuse this sometimes with the other um, 80s uh, gym movie, Aerobicide or uh, Killer Workout, as it's known. Um, this one's a much, this is, this is a much better movie, <laughs> much more entertaining movie. Uh, you've got Ken Foray in it to begin with, so you can't go wrong with that from uh, Dawn of the Dead, um, playing a pretty major role in it. Um, and there is a, it's a supernatural element to um, people getting killed at this gym. I don't want to spoil it. Um, this is definitely a beer and popcorn movie. Um, this is the kind you're going to want to watch with a couple friends, um, you know, and you're not going to be taking it too seriously. But that being said... This movie's got some great kills and some great effects for, especially for its budget, which I don't know exactly what that was, but it's, um, you know, it, it wasn't very sizable. It's also got a lot of 80s cheese to it. Um, I believe, yeah, I want to say 88. This was 1988. Um, yeah, I feel like, at least I know for myself, when I first, uh, you know, was getting back into slasher movies. I've been into them for many, many years, but then when I was trying to find some more of the smaller ones, I would always mix this up with Aerobicide, and I, I've heard other people kind of, you know, mention them in the same breath, but this is above and beyond the, the better movie, in my opinion, especially more entertaining movie. Um, humongous. Uh, humongous. I, I feel like there's the one main reason why people don't really talk about Humongous, and I feel like that's because the... Um, it, all the transfers of this movie for a long time were really dark. <laughs> you couldn't see what was going on um, for a good portion of the nighttime in the second part of the movie. Uh, that's been fixed, um, you know, with some other releases. This is um, this is from Scorpion releasing. I'm sure there's other um, versions out there now. I haven't updated some of my DVDs. I, as you can see, DVDs, not even Blu-rays, um, in, in quite some time. But I do believe, I think Arrow might have put out um, another version of this recently. Um, so those, those are kind of, you know, those issues with the, the actual film presentation quality um, have been, you know, kind of, you know, fine-tuned so you can see what's going on now. Um, similar to, uh, you know, there's another movie that fell into that camp for a long time of Madman, who was, uh, a lot of those scenes were very dark so people didn't really get to see it and then people saw it and they're like, oh, it's great. Um, this isn't going to be a movie that's going to change your world, but it's got everything right in the slasher movie from the early 80s. It's 1982. Uh, this movie is a good back, backwood slasher movie that has, um, you know, a, a moderate budget, of good, good filming. Um, actors, I feel, are actually pretty good in this. Uh, the, you know, the setting, the filming, it, uh, it takes place on an island. 
um, where a mother who, who was raped has a son who is deformed and hides them away from her rich family. Um, so kind of in, you know, in shame. Um, so uh, it's kind of a dark premise to begin with. Um, they start piecing together parts of it when they get there. There's a little bit of a mystery aspect to it. Um, there is, uh, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly, but beside that, you know, the releasing problems for a while, um, it, this, this is really worth a watch. It's really one that I, I feel like, and plus that, that cover art is just awesome. It's one of my, one of my favorites I have up, up there on my, my wall. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is a, there's, there's a scene that's <laughs> ripped pretty much directly from Friday the 13th Part 2, and you'll, you'll know it when you've seen it, and, and a lot of people say that that scene from Friday the 13th Part 2 was ripped from another movie before that, and I think you probably know what I'm talking about if you've, uh, if, I'll, I'll let you discover it from yourself, for yourself. But, um, yeah, this was actually also directed by, I want to say, I want to say Paul, yeah, Paul Lynch, who also directed Prom Night. He was much more well-known for directing Prom Night than for Humongous. I honestly find this to be the more enjoyable movie, uh, slasher movie. Um, I think the only reason Prom Night did better is because you had, you know, you had Jamie Lee Curtis in it, so that kind of uh, drove drove that train. Um, so another one, um, yeah, I I feel like there's no reason that uh, people people can find this a little bit easier now, um, and I, I think it should be seen. Um, Night of the Demon, another one I really don't hear anybody talking about very often. Now, this is not to be confused with Night of the Demon from the mid-80s, the um, Night of the Demons, rather, um, <laughs> with, uh, with Angela, the demon, and company. Um, this is a 1980 film. I think it wasn't released until, I want to say it wasn't released until a little bit later, like 82, 83. Um, it was shelved for a little while. Uh, so this is technically a Bigfoot movie. Um, but it's filmed like a slasher movie, and um, Bigfoot in the movie is uh, also has a uh, has has a relationship and possibly a child. Um, so you'll see that when you watch the movie. But it's filmed like a very early '80s, um, you know, just straight up slasher movie. Not really um, much on, you know, more more of a slasher movie than a, a Bigfoot movie. Let me just put it that way. In the way that it's all, you know, it, that it takes place. And the filming style and all. Um, there is uh, there are a lot of kills, and they're all pretty low budget, and they're all really fun. Um, there are a couple things you'll see from other movies that I feel were taken later. I think it was uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Six with the was that the one with the sleeping bag scene? Um, that happened here first, and you'll you'll see it's pretty much the same same uh, scene. There's a lot of dwelly shots in this movie, which I love. I call dirty, gritty, mean kind of styling of those uh, early 80s slasher movies um, where <laughs> they'll dwell too much on one scene, like af after a kill, maybe getting hit with an axe a few times or something, they'll just kind of camera will focus on it. <laughs> just, just, just a mean-spirited kind of aspect. And um, this is the, uh, this, this also was a, I think this was um, a German DVD. Uh, but this, um, from Red Video, uh, this, I believe, is the uncut. I don't know if, um, I, I don't know where you can really find this, but if you can get, you get your hands on this, this is definitely worth a watch. And again, um, something I never hear talked about. Uh, scalps. Scalps. Um, from director Fred Olin, or what? Ol Fred Olin Ray. And uh, anybody who knows Fred Olin Ray knows that he is uh, one of the kings of ripping things off. And uh, this movie... Uh, this movie's not really any different <laughs> than that, and uh, um, I guess that's not really fair. Uh, the movie is, you know, a little bit more unique than, um, it, it's something I don't see in slasher movies as much. It's a, a Native American um, desert film movie um, where these archaeological students go and uh, are, you know, messing around in the soils, and then they um, dig up the spirit of, in of, of a Native American uh, shaman who then uh, gets into one of them and um, yeah, slasher movie kind of ensues from there. Uh, the filming is really interesting just because of the atmosphere. Um, again, it also has that dirty, gritty mean, how I uh, kind of define it, uh, you know, gritty filming style. Um, y you can't make movies like this nowadays, I feel, <laughs> and that's kind of part of the fun. And anybody who, you know, loves these 80s slashers movies will, um, and this one's from 83, I believe, um, will, you, you know, will, will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that old school matte filming style um, that's just kind of, that you, you don't see as much these, these days. Um, and it's hard to, hard to recreate. Um, this, this movie has, um, again, you know, it's all very, very low budget, um, but it's just, 
I, I say he, he rips things off. This is my favorite movie of his. I think he's done like 160 movies or something. And a lot of them are ripoffs. And this is too of a slasher, the slasher genre, right? Like a cash in. Um, but it had its own things going for it. Again, supernatural aspect to it. Um, there are a couple scenes that you just gotta see. Um, there's uh, by, the, by the fire, there is a um, exploding head scene. That's uh, this definitely worth a watch. <laughs> um, and there's another one um, of a there's this lion in this movie, this lion head that um, it, it's ridiculous. Is it still on the back of the bug now? Um, it's just ridiculous. They were going to use this uh, set design um, for like one scene, but apparently, from what I understand, um, somehow the rights to this either got away or got mixed <laughs> mixed up. And uh, I think Fred Olin Ray wanted that scene to be used like once. They used it like four times in the movie, <laughs> different scenes of this uh, ridiculous lion head with a quivering lip. It's uh, it's uh, something you have to see to um, just check it out. <laughs> Uh, Edge of the Axe is probably um, the most well-made um, Spanish uh, 80s slasher movie that I know of. Uh, again, masked, uh, masked killer. Um, the kills in this are really, uh, really brutal and well-filmed. Um, the budget is, um, it, it's surprising what they did with the budget with this movie, I feel. Uh, again, it's a small town rural um, you know, rural town uh, killing movie, and just uh, you know, a lot of red herrings. You're gonna try to be, you know, figuring out who who done it, kind of a thing. Um, yeah, it was actually filmed in. I want to say it was filmed in California. Um, maybe parts of Canada. I'm not positive about that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it was done by a, a Spanish um, director. And uh, yeah, this is um, it, it, great kills. Like I said, the budget was really um, well utilized, I feel. Uh, this is also one of the first times that I've seen a slasher movie, uh, earliest occurrences of a slasher movie, uh, integrating the internet into it. This is 88, um, and there's a couple of, uh, a couple of those computer, computer loving nerds in the 80s um, that get together, forming a, a love connection amidst the, uh, all these, these murders and trying to investigate who the killer is and uh, using, uh, <laughs> using uh, primitive forms of uh, online um, searching and um, chat based programs to, uh, to check that out. So it's, it's a very, very interesting film for its time. It has an interesting um, twist in it too that I didn't really see coming. Um, so if you like that kind of a thing with, uh, you know, twists and turns and red herrings, this is, this is the one for you. Um, Girls' Night Out. Uh, this is possibly, um, the, the movie on this list that I feel is most unjustifiably not seen. <laughs> I don't really know. I think it was, I think it came out in 83, um, but it, it was made a little bit before that and it was shelved for a little while. I think there was some distribution problems with this movie. Um, but this movie's really got, it's got a lot going for it. Um, you know, great filming, um, you know, it, again, useful, uh, very good use of the budget. Um, it's got a really cool killer. It's a college campus uh, killer. And the killer is, uh, is the, the basketball mascot bear. Um, that, you know, he's got the mascot suit on and then has uh, four serrated knives through the, uh, the bear paw used to, to, to kill people with. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit of a rip. Um, on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, but uh, you know what? Actually, those came out before Nightmare on Elm Street, so not so much. But um, also the uh, the juxtaposition between the uh, the light heartedness at times of this movie, um, you know, joking around with uh, some very interesting characters. These uh, these couple of um, you know goofy jokester friends uh, play center role in that. Uh, just a lot of goofy partying kind of times for you know uh, the, the college scenes in this. Uh, there's someone um, there, there's there's some good characters in this and some some funny scenes. And then it's when it gets to the killing parts, there's they're pretty. Um, they're pretty grisly, and they're pretty not only grisly for the time, but also just mean-spirited. You know, yelling, uh, you know, like "slot bitch" when a girl's getting killed. It's um, it, it's a weird juxtaposition. Like I said, uh, I also feel that um, the the ending to this movie is is pretty pretty harrowing too. Again, for the time period when it came out, um, a really interesting one, and I do think that it was just missed just because of some distribution issues. Um, I, if, I'm gonna. I'm gonna suggest one movie on this uh, this list that's the most well-rounded for when you think of like a uh, you know like a just the early '80s um, you know campus kind of slasher. This is uh, this this is definitely definitely one to check.
And last but not least, I have The Final Terror. Um, so this is a great backwoods slasher movie. Um, it, it, what really shines in this movie is, uh, well, it's got Daryl Hannah in it, so there's that, you know. Um, but what really shines in this movie is these traps that are used, these primitive traps that are used for the, for the killing scenes. Um, now, there's nothing like too gruesome about this. Um, it's, it's got, but just some very interesting, some interesting and unique um, death scenes in it. Um, uh, it won't get too much into the story. It's your backwoods slasher. Someone's hunting people in the backwoods. Uh, uh, someone in the movie um, may have a connection to the killer. And that kind of develops as, as you're watching the movie. Uh, a straight, you know, backwoods kind of. If you like that um, primitive looking uh, 80s, like, uh, a lot of the later 70s too, um, to kind of a survival movie mixed with, um, you know, a slasher movie. This this is a great one for that. Uh, a friend of mine actually used to say that this movie is kind of like um, if Predator was a slasher movie. <laughs> I guess it's more of a jungle movie, but um, but yeah, this is um, definitely a good pick that I don't hear talked about as much um, for your backwoods slasher movie. Um, so that's 10 uh, movies that I feel are underrated, uh, slashers from the 80s. Um, uh, so, so tell me what I missed. Um, you know, other entertaining slasher movies. Uh, like I said, I don't, I don't think this is the be-all, end-all. I, you know, I've seen a ton and I have, uh, you know, a bunch. Um, I'll probably do another list like this sometime soon. Um, but I, I want to focus on ones I think are, you know, entertaining. Um, and I think some of the slasher movies um, rightfully haven't been seen. Some of the, you know, the um, some ones that haven't been talked about aren't talked about for a reason. Let me put it that way. Um, these are ones that, um, again, I don't think they're the most underrated, um, but I think that they are ones that not everybody knows about, and I think they're ones that are um, definitely worth a watch. So if you want to go back and check them out again, if you've seen them, um, or you know maybe seen them for the first time, I hope I've you know given you something to check out. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Um, remember to like and subscribe to Terror at Sentai. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys soon. All right. Take care.